Since humanity first split the atom, nuclear energy has inspired dreams of limitless power. Of unprecedented technological development. And even space travel. Feared by some and lauded by others, today we're going to look at the realities of nuclear and what its future might look like. Despite a slowdown driven by concerns about economics and safety, nuclear remains a pivotal part of the power mix. Yes, and its importance is only set to increase since the international community signed a treaty to limit carbon emissions in Paris in 2016. So, Ashley, what chain reactions are set to happen in this episode? Over the next 30 minutes, we'll be visiting one of the world's most efficient nuclear power plants to find out how fission works and why it's going to play a critical role in the future energy mix. No more nuclear meltdowns. We explore new technologies that are trying to make the nuclear industry even safer. Plus, feeding the reactors. We discover breakthroughs that could give us new access to uranium. And is fusion the future? Can scientists replicate the sun here on Earth to give us a near limitless fuel source with virtually zero carbon emissions? I met William D. Magrid of the Nuclear Energy Agency of the OECD to ask him the pros and cons of nuclear and, of course, all the most important questions. But before we travel to Paris to meet with William, let's see what we already know about nuclear power. There are currently over 400 nuclear reactors in operation, producing around 11% of the world's electricity. More than 60 plants are currently under construction and a further 158 are planned. Nuclear power accounts for about one-fifth of the electricity of nuclear energy countries, ranging from 72% in France to nearly 20% in the US. Concerns about the safety of nuclear increased after the 2011 Fukushima accident. In fact, many countries decided to phase it out, but yet it remains an important source of low-carbon power in countries where demand is increasing rapidly. Most power plants operate at efficiency levels of well under 50%, but nuclear power plants can reach efficiency levels of over 90%. Our first trip is to Finland to visit a nuclear power plant that produces a significant proportion of its country's electricity needs. Teulisuden Voima Olgi, known as TVO, has been generating nuclear energy at Olkiluoto for almost 40 years and provides a significant share of Finland's energy. It supplies the country with low carbon electricity, reducing its dependence on imported power. Well, we produce quite a lot of ele electricity, about 20% almost. And then when Olkiluoto 3, the power plant here is uh, running, so it will be 30% of the Finnish electricity. Olkiluoto 3 is TVO's new European pressurized water reactor. When it comes online, it will be the first nuclear plant in Western Europe in a generation. One important change with Olkiluoto 3 is that it is big. Currently the biggest power plant in the world is about 1500 megawatts and this is 1600. So the size is big, so the dimensions are big, so it's the massive. Nuclear power is a reliable, low carbon source of energy, producing few air pollutants and no carbon emissions while in operation. In a nuclear power plant, uh, the reaction is based on the fission of uranium nuclei when they split to two lighter nuclei and at the same time a lot of heat is released. Then we are cooking water with that heat and the steam is led to turbine side to rotate turbines and then the turbines rotate generator which produces electricity. Much of the public's concern about nuclear power comes from unease about how its radioactive waste is handled. TVO has a unique approach to waste management and is building the world's first permanent underground nuclear waste storage facility. For operational waste, like low and intermediate waste, we have a repository, an underground repository, in the depth of 60 metres in the bedrock. And for spent fuel, we have interim storage, water pool storaging, and a new underground repository for spent fuel is built in Olkiluoto in the depth of 400 to 450 metres. The practice of building and commissioning a new nuclear power plant can prove arduous, but at TVO, OL3 is close to being operational. Well, the Olkiluoto 3 is now in commission phase. So, commissioning a nuclear power plant 
includes several stages and now we just passed one stage which was a pressure test. So we tested that the primary circuit, a very important part of the power plant, is uh, tight. There's, there was no leakages in the pressure test, so it's just one step towards commissioning. But uh, there are still many things to do before the nuclear commissioning, before the electricity production to start. In Finland, where the sun doesn't always shine and the wind doesn't always blow, nuclear power could help the country achieve a sustainable, low-carbon energy future. With the commissioning of OL3, Finland will take another step towards making its dream of a low-carbon energy mix a reality. William D. Magwood IV is Director General of the OECD Nuclear Energy Agency since 2014. The Nuclear Energy Agency, or NEA, is an association of 33 governments with advanced nuclear energy infrastructures. He is a former director of nuclear energy at the US Department of Energy and oversaw the restoration of the Federal Nuclear Technology Program, which led to the creation of Nuclear Power 2010 and Generation 4 International Forum. William, thank you so much for having us here at the Nuclear Energy Agency in Paris. Oh, please, call me Bill. I will. So firstly, tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do here at the NEA. I started off in the industry and a few years after that became the head of the U.S. Department of Energy's nuclear research program. Mm -hmm. And um, I've come to the Nuclear Energy Agency, which is part of the OECD, and I've been doing that for the last three years. Bill, can you tell me why nuclear is so important to a sustainable energy future? Well, I think there's a lot of discussion about the future of energy um, globally. Um, obviously, some countries believe that nuclear power is going to be a big part of the solution. Other countries are going different directions. Mm -hmm. But our analysis shows that it's going to be very difficult to meet the climate goals of the world without the use of nuclear power. Mm -hmm. We've just seen TVO working with nuclear there in Finland. And at that plant, they've developed their own final waste repository mm -hmm. system. Now, can you tell me how the rest of the industry is dealing with nuclear waste? Well, what's happening in Finland is a, really a, a mark for others to follow. Mm -hmm. They've made a lot of progress. And Finland will very likely have the world's first operating nuclear waste repository. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the world wants to move in that direction. Uh, today, however, we're storing nuclear waste on site for the most part. So, Bill, tell me, how safe is nuclear for the earth, for the environment, for humans, for animals? Well, obviously, we think it's very safe. Mm -hmm. um, as part of the NEA, we work on nuclear safety issues quite a lot. It's one of our most important missions. And around the world, there are regulators and operators who focus on safety on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And we're convinced that nuclear power is safe. And we've learned a lot from mistakes of the past, such as the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Mm -hmm. Now, what can the industry continue to do to allay the fears of members of the public about nuclear? Operate safely. I think that's really the only thing. Whatever industry says, whatever ads they put out, whatever mm -hmm. information they provide, mm -hmm. nothing is more important in safe, continuous safe operation and showing people that nuclear power plants can be operated safely over a long period of time. Thank you very much for that, Bill. Stay with us. Now, I think you know everything there is to know about nuclear. Here's one common misconception. You thought you knew? Think again. Myth. A nuclear reactor can explode like a nuclear bomb. Fact. Nuclear reactors and nuclear bombs are very different. The splitting of atoms in nuclear explosions is uncontrolled. In a reactor, the atom splitting is closely monitored and controlled. Also, a reactor runs on fuel that is enriched by about 5%. A nuclear bomb's fuel needs to be enriched by around 90%. New nuclear must simultaneously deliver lower costs, increase safety and reduce waste. Innovative designs for small modular reactors could achieve all of these things. So we travel to London to find out more about one design that could make meltdowns a thing of the past. New Scale Power is the developer of a revolutionary nuclear reactor designed to be affordable, flexible and safe. Expanding into the UK, the company could help change the face of nuclear power around the world. New Scale Power is commercializing a small modular reactor, it's a nuclear power reactor, uh, that's a pressurized water reactor uh, that can produce 50 megawatts electric. So 50 megawatts electric is enough power for about 50,000 homes. 
What NewScale has done differently is take a modular approach in its design. Think of each individual module as a stackable brick that you can add to as and when you need more power. So a new scale power module consists of a reactor vessel inside of a containment vessel. It's all uh, factory manufactured. So I have a scale model I can show you. Uh, this is uh, a, a, a very small scale version. The actual uh, containment would be 22 meters in length. Uh, but it's flanged and so it can come apart. And what we can do with this is that we can actually uh, disassemble uh, the reactor vessel for refueling. Uh, and it can also be uh, reassembled then for inspections uh, and, and for refueling also. So it's a very simple concept that factory built. Uh, there will be 12 of these modules inside of the uh, a nuclear power plant to make 600 megawatts electric. Since each module is individual, such an approach means each can be manufactured off-site. Once built, they can be shipped to the construction location, cutting the cost of new builds significantly and making new nuclear builds scalable. SMR uh, is what we call a small module reactor. So typically these are reactors which are less than 300 megawatts electric in power. Uh, so that's a general class of reactor. Uh, we added the term module because it, in our design it's very scalable. Uh, a customer can add power as power is needed. SMRs are considered to be safer than traditional nuclear because their core heat to surface ratio is smaller. They're considered so safe they have a far smaller emergency protection zone than traditional nuclear. Traditional nuclear power plants in the U.S. are required to have a 10-mile radius around the plant, which is a protective zone. Uh, and so there's a lot of planning that goes into that. Uh, in, in the new scale design, because of this high level of safety, uh, our protective zone is at the site boundary. What that means then is a reduction in cost, but it also reflects the, the fact that uh, this is a very, very safe plant. It allows us to build these plants uh, to where they can replace coal-fired stations, for example, use the same infrastructure, the water, the, uh, the transformers, and that really allows for much more flexibility in terms of this, this particular design. NewScale describes its design as extraordinarily safe because the reactor coolant is driven by natural circulation, so heat is always being removed from the core. A NewScale power module can be safely shut down and cooled for an indefinite period of time without any operator or computer actions, without any AC or DC power, and without the need to add additional water. So it's a very, very safe system. There's no other SMR, uh, light water SMR, that can do that. One question for nuclear as a sustainable energy has been how to match stable nuclear power, which can't be easily turned up and down, with volatile renewables. New scale power is part of the sustainable energy solutions. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important tool, I think, because it's, it's carbon-free, a production of energy. It has a very small environmental footprint, and it integrates well with renewables to allow a greater penetration of solar and wind. With large nuclear plants looking increasingly unaffordable, small modular reactors offer a flexible and cost-effective way to meet the growing demand for low carbon power. And if such plants can work in combination with renewable energy, then nuclear may well play a pivotal role in the energy mix of tomorrow. Bill, as we've seen there, new technology can completely change the face of nuclear energy. So how do we think nuclear can contribute to us meeting decarbonisation targets? Well, you know, as you know, nuclear is the only large-scale source of electric power that does not emit CO2. Mm -hmm. um, as such, using nuclear power uh, versus uh, fossil fuels immediately reduces CO2 emissions. Mm -hmm. Is there new technologies being introduced? There's actually a lot of new technologies coming to the market. I think you've already seen small modular reactors, for example. This is an entirely new way of building a nuclear power plant, mm -hmm. getting away from the large central stations that cost so much to build and are so difficult, and replacing those with small factory-built modules, mm -hmm. which can be put in place very cost-effectively. How long will it take for new designs and fuels to come onto the market? Well, that's a very important question, and it's something we're spending a lot of time on these days. It can take a long time uh, because the licensing that you have to go through with nuclear regulators is very rigorous, mm -hmm. and it should be because this is very important. In some cases, for a new nuclear fuel, for example, it could take you know, 15 or 20 years. Mm -hmm. We're trying to shorten that by using advanced technologies such as computer simulation, mm -hmm. but we're still working on that. Is the way that the nuclear industry is regulated fit for purpose? Absolutely. I, I'm very confident in the strength of regulators, particularly in NEA-related countries. Um, we have worked very hard over the years to make sure that we establish clear rules for what a regulator should be and what it should be able to do. 
And um, we have a, we have we work together. Regulators mm -hmm. talk together all the time mm -hmm. to compare notes and to make sure that they're learning together. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the last few years, particularly, this has become even stronger internationally. Coming up after the break, using technology to change a supply chain, we look at how countries without a domestic uranium resource might gain access to nuclear power. And we find out if the ultimate dream of a limitless clean fuel source, nuclear fusion, can be realised in our lifetime.